What has Beryl got for us? What has Zeus got for us in the top side? It's this Aatrox. Does he really want to run back to Fiora? Owner is going to have to dig deep for a jungler. Kindred is up. If Piosik wants to play a game five and he wants comfort, he can go towards Kindred. But against champions like Varus and Victor with so much poke, it is very tough to pull off. It'll be banned away anyway. The final ban of the draft for T1 is that pocket pick, that comfort for Piosik. We need to see jungler, and we need to see support from DRX. I would expect the support to be the final pick of the draft for maximum surprise factor. Death smiling. Is it Bard? Is he gonna go for the Bard in game five? Yes! yes! I love this guy's confidence. Beryl doesn't give a crap. He's got a run of the map now, baby. If you can push and open up windows here for him to roam around, Visit mid lane, visit top lane. Barrel can be everywhere. Woo! Barrel can be in your dreams. Barrel could be right behind you. He could be in your nightmares as well because when he lands that Bard ultimate, the Caitlyn trap follow up is gonna be insane. There's the Viego from Owner. Now, Zeus, can you surprise us? Is it gonna be a Fiora, a Camille? Or does he have something else in store into his Aatrox? Nar was one of his biggest comforts. Gwen, GP, could be another one. We saw the Fiora fall short just last game. Is he willing to run that back? What will he take into this matchup? Zeus has been such a powerful player, such a standout factor, such a game winner oh, for T1 <laughs> throughout summer, throughout this year, and it's Gwen into the Aatrox. Pulling the Gwen back out here. Let's see about the jungle pathing as well, if they can get up there. Those plus the support timings heavily influence that scaling. Gwen, if you can get to multiple items, what a monster. But here's the problem. T1 are very low on engage. They don't have a whole lot of ways to start the fight outside of, of corruption. Hecarim for Pioshik. Both these teams have thrown everything out of the window. They've come in with different strategies. A little bit of comfort as well. Pocket picks a piece. It's the last game of the year. It's the last game of these players this year. And they're going to put all the cards on the table. DRX have drafted Caitlyn, Bard, Hecarim into these immobile carries. And Zeus has gone for Gwent to get advantage over King in the side lane. This is it. This is your game five draft. This is T1 versus DRX. The Hecarim and the Bard of DRX going up against the Gwen and Faker's Victor yet again. No more storylines. It all comes down to play now. One game in front of you. Execute on the draft. Caitlyn finally let through in the last game of the year. Paired with Beryl's Bard, will it be enough? Will Faker break another record? Will Beryl be the first person outside of the T1 organization to do it back to back in terms of getting those two titles? Fell short last year in the finals in that game five, Beryl. He lost the EDG, but now he's in another game five. Faker is also no stranger to these game five scenarios. It's the experience from the players of Faker and Beryl and four players on the side that could hoist their first title. It's not just a test of mechanics, it's a test of your mind, it's a test of your endurance, mental, emotional, physical, everything is now on one final game of League of Legends. Faker versus Zeka, the greatest to ever do it, and one of the most impressive world's performances we've ever seen from an individual, head to head, one more time. And Zeka has been a monster. Zeka has been punishing Faker over and over this series. Level ones seem a bit stock standard right now. Carry us very deep in the enemy jungle. I think DRX know that he's around there. Beryl's gonna base and swap over to Sweeper. We'll see if Carry can find a little bit of support gold here. T1 Minions wanna invade, strong. it's a Hecarim. Hecarim is so weak level one. It looks like yeah. they wanna take away that buff. Piosik knows it. Needs to be very careful though. He could face check all of T1. If he moves towards this bot side jungle, he's around mid right now. Thinks twice about it. Is he gonna... Oh, this is so concerned. Piosik. Sees them. Okay. Patience. The patience pays off. He waits. He goes for the safe route just over the wall. He won immediately on spawn. Now, Karia can push him off these though. So Piosik's gonna lose his bot side jungle. 
try to keep the Q stacks and move towards Raptors, clear up. What can DRX do with this Kumuyushi? They're gonna try and zone him away from the lane, try to deny him some creeps. That means you're gonna lose out though because Owner got level two off blue buff, so now you're pushing the lane away, jungle coming down to help out Guma and Karia get right back to lane. Yeah, Guma will pick up all the creeps, gets the experience, might lose a couple in terms of gold, so DRX get the wave in, and they're facing a split map scenario, but I think Owner will go through mid to top side and try to control these three quadrants. And it's really smart getting the early level one invade on this Hecarim, very vulnerable champion to getting invaded upon. See if Yosha can salvage some of this. Zeka, mid lane pressure, definitely is a big part and if he can get something back. It's just the blue buff that was stolen away though. And DRX saw Diego going back into the jungle, so not gonna be too heavy, heavily hit. And let's remember the state of the draft. It was Caitlyn left open, but it was Karma picked first. That means T1 really wants to be able to have push, wants to be able to have control in this bottom lane early with the Karma and the Varus together. You can see Zekka pushing in Faker here early on in the mid lane matchup as top side Zeus has lane control versus Kingen. In terms of the state of junglers, you can see it's still just Owner hopping through his jungle. He skipped Krugs going towards that top part of the map. Pioshik's already done his recall. Yes, he has at that. Just clear off Red Quadrant, very low health he was. You recall early for Hecarim, it's not that bad. You can still get your boots for the extra move speed, the extra damage conversion there, and go clean up his Gromp and Wolves. As we said, only the blue was taken, so not too heavily hit. There's no vision right now either. Yeah, he could smite this grab and go for it. Yeah, he could, but I think T1's bot lane are very cautious. TP on yeah. Varus, of course, into the cave lane. And this really stinks for DRX. They need this Caitlyn lane to get the push and start poking the Varus on the tower. The Karma is the, the, the factor that allows T1 to push back against the Caitlyn. Zekka needs to react to this Flash W from Owner. He needs to react to it, otherwise he's gonna die. Owner does not give him the time. Zekka flashes late, and T1 takes first blood. Genius move here from Owner over the back of the Raptor wall. And it's even worse for Zekka. He flashes afterwards and still dies because Faker's got the Q empowered auto in the air. Owner testing Zekka there. Zekka failed the test. First blood over to T1. And that kill will get him a Caulfield's in base. Owner now gonna cycle back through his camps. Yosik struggling to find anything. All these lanes from DRX are getting pushed in. The Aatrox, the Azir, the Cajun are sitting on the tower. If Zekka reacts to this Flash W, then it's just an even trade and he'll TP back, but he doesn't. He steps back into it as he gets the auto attack weave in. And like you said, Kobe, the rub salt in the wound, he flashes and dies. Yeah. Now for Pioshek, what can he get back? It's owner. First to the play, owner first to get his team going ahead. This Hecarim, he, not, he knows he has a lot of gank potential. He knows that if he can find the angle, there's moves to be made. The problem is it's tough when T1 are playing right. Now, owner's coming around again. Zekka has no flash, but he's able to get behind the minions. He'll get out of this one. But Owner really trying to index towards Faker in this mid lane early on in game five. Yeah, again, burning cooldowns, burning mana off of Zekka, taking away the safety of that vision putting his own control ward right back up here so he can control this very important pathway here. Start up the dragon. They've got bottom lane pushing. The multiple ganks towards mid have gotten them mid pressure. So it's an easy first dragon for T1. Pushing lanes because there's no real threat. The Hecarim needs level six. Like you just highlighted there, Kobe. The pushing lanes are so powerful in getting you these neutral objectives and T1 are aware of it. Shut down the Hecarim early. Piosik needs to farm to six before he can impact the map. So T1 can start getting these early game advantages. Top crap spawning soon. Owner might path his way up there. Herald's in two minutes. Piosik needs to get to six before that spawns. Looking for some Raptors though. Trying to steal him away a little bit. Walks on up. Pop Spirit of Dread. Gets himself right back out. And now top side, the fights continue. Zeus versus Kingen. Zeus with the ulti, finds a lot of needlework there into Kingen, who's not able to continue the trade after already using the cooldowns. And Owner will again look for Zekka in mid. He will chase him away as Faker absorbs this wave. Meanwhile, back in top, Q3 hits the mark. Infernal chain, Ooh. solo kill for Kingen in the top lane. Best top laner in the world, who? 369 and Zeus is the discussion. Kingen's in the world finals. He had an amazing game three and four. And now in this game five, Solo kills Zeus. When the pressure is on, it's Kingen who stands tall. 
What a beast. And he's going to go for the recall right now as the wave is also slowly pushing into him. So Owner has to show himself on this top wave to push it in for Zeus. Such top lane difference here for King and back to back this Aatrox pick again. And this relieves so much pressure on DRX. Mid lane's been struggling, a lot of ganks towards there and focus from Owner. Death and Beryl have been on a split map against the Karma support with Bard under their tower. But top lane is now winning. Herald is spawning in a minute. King and has the early serrated Durkins can start pressuring this lane. Zeus even had the counter pick here. Gets level six here, Zeus, and I think he tries to find the all-in, but King and gets a small trade off. They reset, and then on the re-engage, King and kills him. Exactly. Goes for the minions, levels up, uses all of the needlework there. He knows Zeus has nothing left. The ghost was already used here, so King and right on in, hits the Q3. Infernal chain means he's dead. No way. Out! She turns right back into a doll and falls over as the Aatrox popping off here for DRX in the top side. Keeping this game nice and close. Still three minutes until the next Drake spawns, but Harold's gonna be spawning soon. T1 have controlled early objectives so well in this game, but Owner's also got his eyes on the bottom lane of DRX. Deft has no resources to work with, and he must take a recall. They're gonna lose a couple plates here, DRX. T1, not only do they get the split map and the jungle invade, they also have TP on Gumayushi, so they get a free base. Deft struggling, King and it's gonna start up the Herald. It'll be a cross map trade, but T1 are gonna get so much from this play. Yeah, Kadro, you were talking about Pioshik's level six, and where is he gonna go? He's going straight to his winning lane with King in here. They started up on Vision, and again, T1 have made the call. They leave Guma pushing those plates on bottom. But they can't finish the Herald. They know T1's ready to contest. Yoshik. Baker's coming up now too. Pioshik, defensive ulti over the wall. King in with a world ender. He's stuck inside the gravity well, but he goes forward. Baker dies. Zeka gets it. The shuffle to get the rest of them away. Carry has made his way up into the top side. Barrel goes for the flash binding, but he won't grab it. D-R-X. Get the kill, and they're back on the Herald. My god, Kingen is playing out of his mind right now, up against T1. They're at a disadvantage from the get-go because Piosik had to use so many resources to get out, but Kingen goes in. They secure this objective. They were supposed to in the first place, but T1 trying to fight them back, testing the waters in this topside river. And Zekka doesn't miss a beat. He follows him right back up with the Azir. Flash, pushback play with the ultimate. DRX secure the rift trail for themselves. They rest control back. All oh, bottom side though. Gumiyushi with the level six versus level five advantage goes for the chains of corruption. Barrel getting away from Faker here as he retreats into the top side river. Faker will chase him as long as he can, but Barrel is already gone. Let's take another look at the Rift Herald fight. Okay, so this is the setup. And you see both mid laners coming over through the river. Because Biosha goes on this run through the enemy jungle, has to ult all the way around the outside. King in then oh. is the one who takes charge. Goes right at Faker. Zekka, no hesitation, follows him to finish it off and then pushes out Owner and Zeus so they can refocus on that hero. I wonder if he wants to push them in instead and he's trying to finish off Faker as he dash forwards. Nevertheless, they get the kill and they get the Herald King and landing all the sweet spots on that Aatrox, moving back towards the top. Dragon's up in 40 seconds. Beryl, of course, we saw off screen. Uh, he missed the flash queue like you highlighted, Flowers. And now he needs the level six. They have the Herald if they want to brute force through a lane, but I feel like they need to repay death in this lane disadvantage with the Herald. And I think where he goes with that level six you're talking about is straight at Baker. That is a no flash victor now after the last play. So Bard ultimate is prime. The Drake in 20 seconds. The first one already in T1's pocket. You can see them trying to maintain control over the bottom side river. Barrel gets a stun into the wall on Caria to even out support health bars. But it's Pioshik being found by owner here in the river. He's got a retreat. Diego's gonna take care of him there in that 1v1. And with the enemy jungler half HP, T1 has control over the river to start the Drake. Now there is a control ward for DRX. They're gonna see what's going on here. So owner drags it outside the wall where there is no vision, but he does not have the confidence to stick around. DRX is still willing to contest this. King and is the only reason they can contest this. He pushed in top all the way and he's moved towards mid. T1 wanted to start it up, but the Aatrox was collapsing down. Now in this 5v4 scenario, DRX will start it up. Zeus has TP. King can TP back top though. Exactly. It's a beautiful plan. They can make the play on Dragon, force 5v4, and then just have King and teleport back to his top turret. 
Well, the Dragon's low. Owner's coming in. Is this going to be another steal? Barrel will block it with the CC. Beautifully buffered from Owner with a Heartbreaker to escape the Bard ulti. And that's DRX tying up the neutral objective count. King in here going to go for the recall to purchase and then go back to top side because the wave already dealt with here at the tower from Zeus. Ken and Minion moving in. No flash on Faker. Piosik has the ult. has the shuffle. He's not going to get the angle just yet. Pioshik looking for it. There's your engage. Knocks him back out of the gravity well. Knocks him into the shuffle. Knocks him to his doom. And Zekka gets the kill. But now he's got to run. Remember, there's no ulti for owner, but he's still going to grab the kill. One for one on mid laners as Zeus wants to run down Pioshik. Owner's ready to follow. Stole his ear body. Means two for T1. They're not out yet. Owner now going to ult over the back of the Raptors to escape. Here Kingen. comes Kingen. Kingen's ready to go. Zeus is trying to retreat. Q1, Infernal Chains. Q2, but Q3 ain't gonna hit. Zeus walks out. Faker falls, but it's the younglings of T1 and Zeus and Oder that carry him through the play. DRX are focusing down this mobile victor, but they're ready to respond. Owner gets a couple kills back. Zeus chases Piosik away, and it all comes off the back of this engaging mid, Kobe. Exactly. Zeka starts it out. He doesn't want to fully commit at the beginning, waiting for uh, the Hecarim here to get just close enough. Ult Faker back into the wall. They know he has no flash, so he can't disengage. But Owner's not going to let them get away with that one. Nails the stun on Zeka, then picks up his body and is able to use his ear to yep. get over the wall to follow up on Zeus's play. Owner has targeted Zeka twice now with that Spectral Maw, and twice now he has found his mark. T1 are fighting back. Harold used mid. A little bit of gold over to Zekka. Mythic in his favor, has the Ludens already. Faker has flash up, Zekka's ult's coming back off cooldown as well. One minute, 30 seconds away from the Herald. DRX need to keep this mid pressure. Death has been struggling in the lane phase. Herald used mid, doesn't get a couple of plates gold. Needs to get towards that Mythic. God, Owner has done so much for T1 this series. Yeah. So many clutch objective steals. And here, answering these kills in game number five, setting themselves up to retake some vision. Now working with Caria on that support roam timer. Meanwhile, Pioshek wants to look top. Zeus has no ghost. Zeus also now without the W. Gwen is not immune. Pioshek with a devastating charge, bringing him right back into the range of Kingen. And Pioshek gets the kill. Great setup there for the DRX top jungle. Kingen is two levels up on Zeus. Mid and bot have been a little bit even and behind for DRX on the bot side especially, but top lane, Kingen has been taking charge in this game five. And now bottom side, it's Gumyushi and Karia trying to push up as they know their top side has just taken another hit. Gumyushi and Karia, without having to deal with turret plates anymore, should be able to find the first turret of the game right here. Yes, they will. It's Gumyushi getting the credit. They've been so powerful, so reliable, and they showed it. The first pick, Karma. Instantly locking this one in. They pay their team back. They take down the first turret. Massive gold lead once again for Guma. And this time, he's on the Lethality Varus, so that poke is really going to sting. It is indeed Kobe and Barrels looking to cancel some bases there, try to stop the backs, try to give DRX more time around mid. Piosik might look to get Faker's Flash again, but Zeka gets stunned up. Barrel just trying to move up and down the river. Bot Tower is down, so the Bard is free to roam. And we can have them roam over to that Rift Trail. Rift Trail number two just arriving to the Rift now. So we'll see about this setup. No hesitation from DRX. They're helping Zekka get the mid push first. And they're grouped up as a team. They're looking for picks. They're seeing what they can do. Meanwhile, T1 again. They've got Guma on the bottom side. And with Guma channeling this recall here, Looks like they, ooh, not going to go for it. Teleport comes out here from Zekka, though. Guma also has a teleport to be able to join up. DRX have started the Herald, but T1's ready to fight for it. They're going to bring Faker in with the TP now, too. Caitlyn Trap hits Zeus. He's going to lose a little bit of HP, but a lot of patience being lost on the Herald now. Down to 1,600, down Reset. to 1,100. It resets. And now what about the fight? Piosha could have HP. DRX still grouped up. T1 still trying to contest for this. Harold at 7,000. Kingen back into the pit. He stands alone from the rest of DRX now. He'll continue holding Harold aggro. This could be the decider of the championship. Kingen off the side. Piosa getting chunked out. T1 get the Herald. Dragon's coming up pretty quickly here in 16 seconds. DRX going to retreat through mid lane. Well, 
Zaka's gonna put some damage on him. Kingdom stand on the flank. He's gonna look for it, but a flash out from Faker keeps him safe. World Ender is a very important cooldown on a very fed member of DRX, but they've got Pryo, they've got first shot here at the bottom side objective now. And they can just trade it. That's actually a pretty good trade for them, getting secondary tower. T1 though, you look at the response instantly with their macro. Owner goes top side, they've got the Rift Herald, they're gonna shove down these towers and make a hard push. They might look for tier two as well. DRX have to use a lot of time to get this dragon down. Kingen's moving up, should be in time to cover it, but look at Faker, he's trying to back up the top jungle off T1. Trying to look for that second tower will be a huge gold injection into Zeus if they can get it. King it needs to be very careful here. Faker is still around. Carry us showing mid. Def backing up his top laner. Zeus goes forwards. Zeus trying to look for King in here, but Zeus losing a lot of HP. Still has the big shot of needlework. Throws it out now. Kingen's gonna keep chasing him off. Ace in the hole, only hits owner, no big deal. T1 will get the one turret there in the top side, but a defense on the tier two from TRX. Small gold lead for T1, but uh, DRX have that second dragon. Mountain Soul, incredibly powerful the longer this game goes on. Can negate a lot of damage in these team fights. Sekka's gonna pick up the blue buff. All tower is still up for T1 though. DRX yet to crack one open, T1 have found two. Numa has been so good with this Varus, with these snipes. I want to see what he can accomplish this game because the slow reduction on the Boots of Swiftness works on self-slows as well. We'll see if that means the difference between hitting the snipe, hitting the critical kill. Pioshik, though, making use of his move speed on Hecarim has been very live. DRX's comp is very good at punishing no-flash targets. Bard ultimate, the shuffle. Here it is! Oh, but it misses. Kumiyoshi stepped forward to dodge, and now he has to flash to be able to get away. T1 will lose that critical summoner Faker, no spell flash. on their AD carry, but Faker's now the target. Devastating charge, onslaught of shadows, but not enough damage. Zeka has to get away, his owner's ready to follow up. Pioshik is too far forward, and Faker takes him out. Now owner's got the charge to chase Zeka. He's gonna look for it. Barrel's ready to try to protect, and he gets him away on a magical journey. It's owner again to the rescue. He comes in for the counter on the Viego. He defends again. Faker now going to be able to push off the back of that. They've got the extra person advantage with Yoshik still sitting on a 12 second death timer. T1 pushing all three lanes. It's the battle of the mid jungles. T1 coming out ahead. 100% kill participation for Owner and Faker. Ever since the start of the game, Owner's been trying his best to get Faker ahead. He is marginally in levels. Look at this again. Faker no flash. Lands the, the fear onto Faker, but Zeka can't do a lot of damage right now. And Owner is there to follow up. Flash stuns Kyosik, who has no ghost. They get the reset on the kill. They chase down Zeka, but he manages to get out. Every time they go at Faker, he unloads a big combo. Kyosik, though, my goodness, going down so quickly there. Owner jumps on him. Gotta brush it off. Yep. yep. Just have to think about the next play. This is your last game. It's all decided here. TP coming in from Faker. T1 want to pressure down this mid tower. DRX, not a lot of wave clear to respond. Barrel's getting locked down, but he gets away. Lots more damage pouring in, but not enough to kill him just yep. yet. P.O. Shik's coming around from the side. Kingen's on the flank now, too. Oh, they're waiting on the TP to come in. Gumayushi's going to be targeted. He tries to get away, but he's going to die out first. Zeka's trying to get away. They're finding more damage. His owner's about to fall out of Yoshik now. Zeus wants to fight against Kingen. The ball keeps him alive. And DRX is winning the fight. And Shadow was still ready. Faker dies. Zeka goes in. And Karia will die. Two, four, for nothing. DRX. Yoshik brushes himself off. He gets back up and he gets the engage to break the game open. That's going to be DRX on Baron. They take down four of T1. The flake from Pioshik on the top side and then teleport in from Zeka. DRX circled T1 like sharks, herding them in. T1 didn't find a response. Guma, can he steal it? Guma will no have way. to fly right here. Oh Snipes away the hopes of DRX. I'm speechless. DRX, how? It's all falling apart again. We'll look at the play. DRX collapse onto T1. They get the kills and they, they manage to pick up four. 
Then they move towards the Baron. It comes off a great engage from Piosik and Kingen. Deft almost dies to Zeus. The TP from Zeko is great for the flank. But again, they go towards Baron and it all falls apart. It, again, you're, you're exactly right. This is amazing. Zeko with the flank comes in. They get four kills off of this. Piosik chases it through with the Hecarim. His ultimate came back up. They get Faker, they get Karia, but they don't get Baron. Holy. TRX. I moments think before disaster. Yeah, that's yeah. after the fight. Yeah, I think moments they... before. How does Scooby Yushi get this? Does he even have vision? Blue Orb comes in, he must just about see it. The arrow of a lifetime. The steal of a lifetime from Gubayushi. That's twice in this series he's done it. T1, grab onto a miracle. And they have a chance in this game again. T1 have more than a chance. They have a push here in the bottom lane. Everybody's ready to go. Zeka staying on the tier two in the top side. T1 have already broken the tier three. They are looking for the inhibitor and they will already take it. Dragon's up. T1 want to move towards it. They got the inhib. Tier two top fell as well. Faker has flash. He has the flash. Yoshik's trying to get it from him. Nice ulti coming out from Barrel, but Kingen is here in a 1v4. Kingen is about to die. He will drop. T1 has taken out the fed player. Barrel gets away over the wall. And DRX are collapsing. T1 are running this game now. The push in mid comes through, but Zekka's here to respond. Dragon is up, so that should be a pretty easy exit objective. 2,000 gold lead for T1 right now in this game five. The power of a single ability, a single steal. T1 picking up the kills, the pick up the dragon in the aftermath. That will haunt Bioshik forever. They need to stay composed now, DRX. The siege is over. It's heartbreak again, but they've never failed to bounce back every single time. Level-headed, two items on the Caitlyn. Azir will be their late game insurance, but T1 just got a massive injection of gold. Absolutely incredible from T1 when the pressure is on. Leave it to the winningest organization in the history of League of Legends to have the players, to have the composure, and to have the skill to claw their way back. What a series. What a game five as T1 continue their command over the Rift. Moving up, clearing the vision. Kingen is in a very precarious situation, perhaps. Yeah. They're gonna see him there with Owner's Sweeper. It will show the red silhouette. Four minutes until the Drake, two and a half minutes until the Baron. Not really any objectives to fight over. Pioshik activated the devastating charge, but meanwhile, the T2 here in the top side will fall to T1. Zeka will respond with the bot tower, but a lot more gold into T1's back pocket. The cross map's okay. DRX will be in time to wave clear. Next Baron's up in two minutes. I think DRX are just stalling till that spawns. Two dragons apiece. Small gold lead for T1. But I think it's gonna be pretty even around these fights. It's gonna be very nuanced onto who can find the carries. Can Kingen land multiple Qs? Can Piosik find the engage onto Gumayushi? No Mikhail's up just yet. Yep, again, you talked about it before, Kedril. The barrel ultimate from Bard on one of these low mobility carries. Right now, Faker, no flash. If they can catch him, they can Zeus. follow it up with a trap. Zeus with the ghost instantly, though, for the move speed to run. Yep, he can get out from it. Kim Tech future fire, Kim Tech tank, I should say, was him. not used. Zeus still looking to maybe come back and fight this. Has the needlework ready. Piyoshi goes on a magical journey. T1 now, Faker's very low. Kingen's fighting 1v2. He gets himself away. It's a defensive ulti from Owner back over the wall. He almost won that fight. Faker didn't have the flash, but he manages to get away. DRX is going to clear out these waves. Inip's still down, of course. One minute away from the Baron, and everyone will shift their attention towards the top side of the map. Look at that grab. What on earth? Look at that drop at 20 minutes yeah, that's because the Baron of the right there. That's an arrow right through the gold chart. T1 and DRX leaving it all on the rift here today. T1 about to take out their seventh turret. DRX have bounced back from worse situations in game though. Again, refocus on the task at hand. This is the last game of the year. Barrel now trying to fight for some vision. Instantly disengages. Yup. He knows how dangerous this is. He knows how deadly that fog of war is. With 30 seconds until the Baron spawns, T1 have control over the topside river.
And we're going to keep our eyes on Faker. With this Lich Bane build here, you can pump out a lot of damage if you can stay in a dangerous range, auto attack range of your opponents. Can he stay safe, though? Still waiting on a few more seconds from his flash cooldown. Purchases up the stopwatch for himself. Yep. Mid push still coming in. DRX needs to crack this mid tier one. It's such a pain to get vision. It's really hard to walk in enemy jungle when that tower is up. T1 still have a lot of topside. Vision Faker pushes in the waves all the way to tier three. DRX barely trying to get vision in their own jungle. Baron is up with the poke. Varus, it's not as fast as they might want, but with Diego and Victor, they can rush it down. Kingen has the TP. Exactly. Kingen trying to push out that bottom wave and wait for T1 to start it. Here it comes. They don't have the best turn off of Baron. They don't have the best pick here for T1. It would have to come from Guma with the ultimate from Varus, sniping yeah. someone. That's really only the only engage mechanism available to T1. Death's going to utilize the range of the Caitlyn there to try to safely clear out some of these wards, putting the traps inside the brush just to make sure if anybody steps too far forward, they're going to be caught out. Mist from Viego will allow him to step a little bit further forward. Inhib respawns at a pretty critical timer here for the side of DRX, but Barrel's no. about to die. Deus gets it, and that could be big for T1. DRX need to move in here. They need to look for a steal. Pio 6 only way over is the ultimate. There's no way out. They need some vision. Pink Ward in the pit will spot the Baron. Pio 6 in the vicinity. Pio 6 looking for it, but Carry is zoning him away. T1 took some serious damage there from the Baron. They're going to get chased off. Against all odds again, DRX numbers his advantage. They hold on. Dragon up in 20. They're shifting their eyes down towards this bot side. T1 need to take a base. Level 16 is here right now. The range on DRX is so powerful. T1 are struggling. Barrel's gonna be back up for this dragon, coming straight from base. Here we go. Look at Piosik. He's moving his way. Wrapping around. Around. He's trying to keep the He Q wants attack. a flank. He has ult ready. Yeah, he's gonna look for a flank onto the carries. T1 are completely unaware of his positioning. They'll see this push here and maybe spot out Kingen, but they won't know where Piosik is. Zeus is going to walk towards the brush, but he won't take a ton of damage. There from Kingen's surprise attack. Kingen makes his way into the pit. Pioshik is still behind them. Owner takes a chunk. Drake at about 5,000. Seiyu's gonna move into the pit. He's ready for that angle now. Karia, Owner, both chunked a little bit. Sekka and the rest of DRX are not damaging the Drake any further. They're gonna allow it to reset. Kingen to the flank. Kingen finds Karia right when they need it most. But now he takes some damage back. He has to walk it off. The Drake's at 4K. A little bit of damage over the wall. Barrel's trying to block Kuma. it. Dragon is secured. Kumayoshi is down. And T1 are trying to fight back. Pioshik's under fire. He will drop. It is a two for three for two in the fight. Excuse me, but what kind of League of Legends are we watching? Good Lord. This is what we're watching. Pioshik gets the dragon this time. DRX secure the objective. They secure the smite. And Kingen in the brush immediately deletes Caria. Hello. Yeah, just walks onto the trap. He gets blown Head up instantly. Shot. DRX, even though the flash came in, and then Guma has to flash. So then the Bartle from Barrel lands onto Guma Yushi. But I feel like DRX really overcommit onto the Varus and walk into the waiting arms of Zeus and Owner. They managed to get the AD carry down. They invest so much, however, that Owner gets the resets. Look at that. Owner blasting them, picking up the Aatrox body from the Fed King in as well, and zapping down the last kill. Gold. Pretty close still with oh. the extra dragon here leading up to Soul Point now. And Carrion knows. Walking into that trap, into that brush, into that Aatrox. It's the same story as the entire series. Gold lead over to T1, Dragon lead over to DRX. They're on Soul Point. They're happy waiting the game out. Death's getting closer and closer to that Infinity Edge breakpoint. When he gets that item, he's gonna do out so much damage and he's so very close. T1 wants to play. The side laners aren't even pushing sides anymore. It looks like they're grouping up. Zeus is going towards top now, but Kingen is hovering around the bot side jungle. DRX have mid pushed out. It is a lot of focus here on this mid lane. Both teams now taking an opportunity, resetting a little bit. Baron is on the map, no Drake for three minutes. Critically, DRX did get the objective in that last fight. Zayu's gonna back away as he sees Barrel here. DRX still maintaining a defensive position, seeing if there's anything to find, but Zayus gets away with the Blast Cone. The game, only 2,000 gold apart, 30 minutes in. Now the Infinity Edge, active for Daft, is going to be a big difference maker. Zayus close to the Rabbitons as well. 
A moment to take a breath. And San Francisco, are you not entertained? A little bit of extra speed there for Piochik. That devastating charge isn't going to be used for a whole lot just yet. Seca with the Ludens with the Shadow Flame. Banshee's Veil now completed. T1. Still defending the mid lane tier one turret. It is three turrets to seven. T1 have taken many, many more objectives this game. Zeus will move into the pit. He'll clear out some of the vision. Barrel gets poked down by some of the fire from Gumiyushi's arrows. Two minutes on Dragon. Soul point, of course, for DRX. Let's not forget the Baron Dance continues around vision around this wave in mid. DRX really need this tower if they want to start controlling the map. T1 have been holding on. And as they dance, again, Guma has no flash. He dodged oh. away from the Bard ultimate this time, but T DRX still pushing. They get what they came for. That Bard ultimate, it was just to create space for a couple of seconds. Seus running away from Kingen. Seus has level advantage here. Kingen doesn't find sweet spot on the Q3, but he's got backup. Seus is going to be caught. DRX moving in for the T1 top lane, and they got him 5v1. Kingen's got teammate advantage. DRX rally around their top laner. Now with that extra kill, they can easily push down top side and slip into this barren river. 40 seconds on Zeus and he has TP. DRX still have a couple of ultimates to work with. They've had so much heartbreak around this Baron. Are they willing to start it up again? Owner's alive. T1 have the mid push. They're going all for it. Here all the go. cards are on the table. Flank, flank, flank. They're wrapping around. Yep. Keep your eyes on P.O. Shaken on Barrel. DRX, they don't even have their jungler in the pit. They are not going to commit to the Baron. They are looking for some sort of a play. Barrel is burning, but they're ready. They're turning. P.O. has Faker. Carrier barely lives. He's trying to run away, but Sekka and P.O. are still chasing the him ultimate. down. A bullet to the head. And and Death pulled the trigger. They get the flank off. Karia fights it, and T1 try to attack it, but it still works. Pioshik finds Faker, and Faker doesn't have TP. DRX don't even go towards the Baron. Dragon Souls up in 35 seconds. They know they have a few seconds of a time window to force down the Dragon. What's the call here from DRX? They're avoiding the Baron. We're going to look at this fight again. Zeka is the hero. Carrier here, look at this, he finds the flank and T1 all come to try and attack it. Barrel so low, heals himself, but that just leaves the opening. Pioshik and Zekka. You mentioned the Azir sweep, he hits Faker with it, dies before the body hits the ground. We need to go back to live, the ult comes out onto Carrier. Looks like DRX have based, they're around this dragon, but T1 are gonna threat a Baron rush, so DRX will get the soul. Pioshik's here. Barrel will try to keep everybody away, try to interfere as much as he can. Pioshik and Sekka working on the Drake. 5,000 HP left. Death wants to get away. A lot of threat coming out from the needlework. Kingen's very low. He goes into the stasis. He's still going to live, but only for a moment. Kingen down. Soul for DRX. But it'll be Baron for T1. They're going to force on it and try and make DRX come to them. 5 v 4 advantage. This is They're it. burning it down. Owner has smite. Pioshik does not. No Kingen. No Kingen. This has to be a no-go for DRX. They will back away now. You're absolutely right, Flowers. Death was really low HP as well. Had to use the summoners to escape. T1 managed to get the Baron in trade for the soul. DRX were trying to stall them, so they just ran headfirst into them to force the fight. Pushed back Death, killed Kingen. And now what can T1 get done with this Baron? The soul will last forever. The Baron's only going to be up for a couple minutes. Very dangerous pushing on the side lane as well. Now that that death cap had come in for Zeus, total damage done at the top of the charts. Both top laners. Let's take a look at the spread though. 1-3-1 one, one initially. Zeus. Doesn't see them. They've gone back to base. Gets the outline. Zeka gets the Rabadon. So this is here getting closer and closer to full build. This is the game five we were promised. This is the perfect ending to this series. Both teams are just battling here in game number five. Deft with the Caitlyn working on that fourth item. It's not been a fantastic game for him falling behind early on. But now that he's fed, now that it's late game, things are going to be a little scary. Faker at half HP, Ace in the hole doing a good job chunking him out. And DRX, they've dropped the Sun Disc there in mid. But there's nothing to play for here on the top side. Baron still under the possession of T1. 
DRX make a nice hard push on mid and top lane to try and nullify and reduce the amount that T1 can get with this Baron. They're just trying to, de to delay because then they come out ahead with the power of this Mountain Soul. Oh, this Baron. oh nice. Uh, Baron buff wasting away. Yeah, and uh, Death's getting closer and closer towards that Bloodthirster. Kazen can become so powerful. T1 don't actually have a reliable auto attack champion other than the Diego and the Gwen. There he carries a poke champion, whereas Deft will get closer to six items. Azir as well. Such powerful late game scalers that will melt through T1. So they want to push their advantage while they have this Baron buff. Only one minute left on it. And remember, the only real catch or engage on T1 is the ulti from Gumayushi. He was the hero with the arrow back at the Baron. But now, T1 are trying to use what's left of this 45 seconds of Baron buff. Look at these wards behind T1. They need to be really careful if they overstep. King and can TP behind them. Zeus will be ready and waiting for Pioshik. Pioshik's gonna have to hold out of this one. You would think, no! Gumiyushi gets the kill, and T1 are 5v4! Guma nailed him with the chains of corruption, and Pioshik falls. 40 more seconds on his death timer now, and look at this. The brush play from Kingen. Can he pull it back? Baron buff falling off in 15 seconds. Bot lane inhibitor is open. Zeus might be caught here, Kingen. Zeus does not have an ulti. They used it for the pick. Now he's gonna try to run from Kingen, who keeps the chase going. Q2 finds him. Q3's not gonna get nothing more than a chicken. DRX still trying to hold on. Death backing away. Zekka backing away. T1 looking for the inhib. You would think they should be able to find this one, no problem. There it is. T1 take bot lane inhib for the second time this game. I can't imagine how much pressure all of these players are under in this game five. T1 managed to crack that inhibitor like you highlighted, Flowers. But they still have the Mountain Soul. The pick didn't net them an end. Elders up in 2 minutes 20, Baron's up in 2 minutes 40, roughly the same time on the spawns. So they're going to need to juggle both the objectives to make sure, most importantly, the Elder doesn't go over for free. So much riding on this next team fight. Instantly picking up as many stopwatches as you can. Guardian Angel over here. Zonia has been there for Baker. Yeah. Key, key disengages. This fight means everything. What a series. This one's... uh. This one's delivering, man. Everything I hope for. What? Everything I hope for is what we're getting. And now we're seeing so many champions get so powerful. Just like it's been this whole series, it's going to come down to execution. Yeah. It's going to come down who can, to who can really stand tall in these biggest of moments. It's going to be a very fitting ending, ending to what has been such a beautiful story between these two teams. T1, the bounce back and the struggles from MSI. And DRX, oh. the surprise to the world. Elder up in 1 minute 20 seconds. Trying to contest a little bit of both side vision here. T1 looking to see if they can find a pick. DRX don't have to deal with a Baron anymore. But they still have to deal with walking into the fog that is their own bottom side jungle. T1 will clear out any wards they come across. They still have a small gold lead, but at 39 minutes into the game, it's not that big of a deal. Bloodthirster for death. A little bit of extra survivability, sustainability here in the fights. We've mentioned multiple times how little CC T1 have to work with. They gain so much from being at the objective first, forcing DRX to go through these small pathways, let them hit the skill shots. Guma on the front line. Guma's on he the misses. front line. Ace in the hole is only going to hit the shield. The last time T1 went to a game five in a world championship was against Damwon, and it came down to an Elder Dragon fight. Here we are a year later in the finals. Same oh. glory. Barrel goes for the ulti, but Faker has fast enough feet to barely dodge forward out of it. Guma no flash, Guma no ultimate. Owner blows up the blast stone though. King in finding his way around. This Aatrox, a pest in the T1 side. They're DRX. going through mid though. Yeah, they're going through mid here, T1. DRX are pinging this top wave. There's a threat of an end. King in's on the flank. Kingen's looking for it. He has been the X Factor, but Barrel's gonna die. He barely gets away. Pioshik's in the retreat. Barrel stays alive somehow. Redemption's coming down, it's gonna heal him up. T1 moved in, Kingen was not able to respond there with the flank. He'll steal the enemy red buff for the upcoming fight. T1, chunking out the health bars, decide to go for the Elder. Kingen's still ready. TP coming back in for DRX. Seyus an owner here in the pit. Seyus goes over the wall, but Kingen's ready to find him. Q1, Q2, finds his place back inside the pit. Drake gonna slightly reset. Gonna come down to a smite fight. Kingen's ult is off. Barrel has the ultimate back up. No carries on the flashes. 
Look at the trap line. Look at the Caitlin. He's trying to send him away. Owner goes Owner. in. Owner, they he's down. Out. The Drake secured. T1 jumpers. T1's going to the base. They're going to the next test. Can they do it in time? Kingan comes back. Elder Drake at the ready. But what can he do? Q3, no damage just yet. Elder Drake, the executor. Sayus is down. DRX, hold on. Kingan, he gets back. He does it. Gumi, he's just going to find the ultimate on the Bioshock, but they still have the Elder Dragon buff on DRX. They're going to run straight back into the hearts of T1. Can they end? This is it. T1 are so vulnerable and wounded. DRX have the Elder Dragon. Four members down. It's on Gumayushi to hold the line. DRX are coming for their World Championship title. The Cinderella story. DRX are pushing in. DRX, they're on to inhibitor turret number one. Only Carrier is going to be up. It's still 10 seconds on owner. DRX will march forward. Karia wants to hit the wave. Kingan They're goes to the win. world ender. Gumayushi is dead. They have been doubted. They have been discounted. They have been dismissed. But DRX are your 2022 world champions. Complete the miracle run. Huh. We have just witnessed the most incredible story in history. TRX have done it. T1 are shell shocked. They're stunned. No fourth seed had even made it to finals, let alone winning the world championship. Death in his tenth year. He won. He won. He won. The world title. He's won MSI, he's won LPL, he's won LCK, he's won Rift Rivals against Korea and China, but he's never won a world championship and he's done it. He's done it. One of the greatest finals in League of Legends history. People are going to be watching that VOD for years to come until the servers go down. What a show from these two teams. Death beats Peria. They walked with the title together. And only one could walk home victorious. And Death has had to see so many of his former teammates succeed without him. All of the emotion. The whole year boiled down to this. The group of friends that made the miracle run through all the objective steals. The mentality of diamonds, untiltable, unassailable, DRX world champions.
Baker's lost half HP. Baker is nearly down. Hostile takeover over the wall. Wish from Soraka will heal the mid laner. But Maokai says no. DRX ready to fight back again. Twenty-two League of Legends World Champions. Did